प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह बोलो घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बलवेद घनश्याम महाराज पूज्य पाद गुरुजी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हम्बल जय स्वामी नारायण Last week, we discussed Sadguru Gunatitan Swami's Vato. I'm going to first read it again, and then we're going to again analyze the other half. Swami Narayan Hare, Pachi Vadi Swami Vat Kari Je, Maharaja Anand Prakarni Vato Jivna Mokshna Arthe Pravartavi Che. पन तेमा चार बात छे ते तो जीवनु जीवन छे ते शु तो एक तो महाराज नी उपासना बीजु महाराज नी आगना त्रिजु मोटा एकांतिक साथे प्रीति ने चौथु भगवदी साथे सूरत बनु ये चार बात तो जीवनु जीवन छे ते तो मुकुज नहीं So, last week we discussed about the first two points that I just want to shortly recap. First, Swami says that there's four things that are one's life source for the soul. So, first and foremost, Agna, Upasna, Suratbao, and Ekantik Mapriti. These are the four that Swami mentioned. Now, regarding that, the first two that I categorized that I want to make primary over the other two were first, number one, if one has this, then all the other three will automatically sprout. What I'm saying is the one who has affection for the ekantik sadpurush that plays a role in the form of oxygen for the body then all the other three meaning water clothing and food will come on the other hand upasna upasna is played as the role of water for the human now this week we're going to discuss about the other half, which is Surat Bhav and Agna. Now, first and foremost, you're probably wondering about that word, Surat Bhav. What does that mean? Well, affectionate or friend-like feeling towards another fellow devotee. It can be a saint. It can also be a devotee. Either or. But an affectionate, friend-like feeling. Just like how in your high school or just like in your college you have friends but they're not only friends to you they mean something more to you how you share your mind's thoughts with them you share your personal secrets with them over anyone else meaning you hold some kind of deeper feeling towards them you remember them often you call them just like how that similar feeling that we have towards our classmates or any other personal friend we have. Just like that, by putting or by having affectionate feeling towards a devotee of God is called Surat Bhav. Now I compared this Bhav, I compared this element to food. Why? Because food for the human body is essential. Obviously, one can live without food, and it has been proven for much time. But the lack of energy, the lack of sufficient nutrition 
can harm one's human body. Regarding that point, food is very essential in the way where energy is provided to each and every organ and the body is strengthened and you can, you're able to do or you're able to maneuver in your daily life easily. But if one didn't eat for even one day, for example, Ekadasi, a big Ekadasi just went by near Jada Ekadasi, Jaljini Ekadasi. And many, many kids here, many, many devotees here did waterless fast. So I could see probably by the end of the day, I observed that many, many people, many, many devotees were very weakened and uh, were fatigued. And this was all due to the lack of water as well as food. But everyone pulled out and the next day everyone ate some food, prasad, and due to that their energy was gained again. In the same particular manner, food for the human body is energy in the same way surat bao for the soul is the energy for the soul. I'm reminded of a story in the time of Sriji Maharaj about Jinabai and his great service. Now, before I introduce Jinabai, I would like to introduce the main character, Kamalsi. Now, Kamalsi Bhagat lived in the village of Mangral near the Bhavnagar port. He was a very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminare. He was very, very dedicated to his faith and he properly followed all the niyams all the agnas, everything. But there was a small problem in his life. His true identity, you can say, or his original faith was of the Muslim ethnicity. But after meeting Bhagwan Swami Narayan, after engaging with him, after understanding his glory, he changed his faith and converted to the Swami Narayan faith. Due to that, his family was completely against him. Obviously, just like right now in society, if we do something that is out of the normal, if we do something that is towards even the religious side, which is more than someone would expect, if we, for example, if someone would, were to become a saint, then obviously commotion would arise in one's family. But if that same child were to go outside, go to parties, or hang out with friends late night, do something that you don't even know about, know about if you were the parent, then the parent would not worry or would not make a commotion. But if that same child decided to become a saint, then commotion would arise and something catastrophic would happen to that family. In the same way, way, Kamulsi had that same situation where after converting to the faith, his family completely rejected him. So all his life, he had to struggle through this, but he worked hard, he worshiped Bhagwan, And at the end, when he became very, very sick, his family was not there for him to take care of him. His family, his whole life, rejected him. But even at such a critical moment when his life was in danger, when his health was in danger, his family was not there for him. Why? Because he changed his faith. So no one was there to nurture him at that time. At the same exact time, Jinabai, an ikantic devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, came to that village of Mangro at that time and saw what kind of situation Kamal Sib Bhagat was in. He saw that there was no one to take care of him. His family was completely against him because of this, I guess, endeavor he pulled. But in reality, he had done nothing wrong. But his family did not understand this. So, Jinabai felt pity and felt very, very compassionate upon the situation. So what he did was he went to Kamal Sibhagat's family and asked for permission 
to take him to Panchara, to take care of him, nurture him. The family, right at once, said, please take him. We don't want him here. We don't want him. He's taking up our space. We don't want to take care of him. We don't want to provide him any medicine. It's wasting our money. We don't want anything to do with him. Please take him as soon as possible. So, Jinabai, understanding Gamal Sibhagat's Mahima, his glory, that this is a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He took him to Panchara, his hometown, and started serving Gamal Sibhagat like his own family member, like his own brother. Every day he would take care of him, change his clothes, give him a bath. The physical body could not endure as much, so it was very hard for Gamal Sibhagat to even get up. But Jinabai even did the most lowest of seva, you can say, or seva that a nurse would do in a hospital. Just like that, he did for a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Jinabai did not ask for any kind of money or ask for, or he wasn't even told by Bhagwan Swami Narayan to do this. But understanding the glory and understanding that this is a devotee of Bhagwan. I, it's my duty to serve him. It's my duty to take care of him. Such kind of affection he showed. So, one day while he was taking care of Gamal Sibhagat, Gamal Sibhagat started to acquire a severe headache. And due to that, he could not withstand it. It was cruel or it was very intolerable. So, in those days, you know how right now, if we get a headache, then we would take Tylenol or Advil or go to our doctor and get prescribed for some other heavy medicine. But in that day, they didn't have those kind of, you can say, facilities. So what they did was they would take crushed black pepper and smear it into a paste. And then they would smear it on the forehead of that person. So the philosophy, I guess, behind this was that Black pepper is very, very, you can say, uh, strong in the manner where it can pull that headache away and take it into itself, you can say. That's what the philosophy was. So what Jinabai did was ask for crushed black pepper to his sister, who also lived in the home. His sister was not as much of a devotee as Jinabai was. So... Obviously, first, regarding the point that, you know, Gamal Sibhagat was just a person off another village. He didn't know anything or he was just not a family member. She had black pepper in her closet. She knew about it, but she did not take it out. What she did was told Gina by that, sorry, brother, we're out. So we don't have any black pepper here. So Gina by continued his seva and just without this... I guess remedy, he just continued to serve Gamal uh, Sibhagat until he fell asleep. Then a couple days later, Jinaba himself got a headache. So, without even asking, his, sis uh, her, his sister c came with the crushed black pepper and introduced it to him, that here brother, make this into a paste so you can smear it on your forehead. Jinaba thought at once, immediately it came to his mind, that a couple days ago I asked for black pepper, yet you didn't provide it to me, and we didn't even go to the market, yet how did you get the black pepper? So she said that I had black pepper. I had black pepper inside. I had black pepper inside of my closet, but I didn't take it out because I was saving it if one of our family members got sick or had a headache. So at once, Jinabai became upset. Why? Because Jinabai said to his sister that I had asked for the black pepper when Gamal Sibhagat became very, very sick, yet you didn't provide it to me. And then after when I got a headache, you provided it to me. Why did you lie? She was completely speechless because she didn't have any kind of retaliation so, knowing this, Jinabai completely stopped talking to her sister, his sister, because 
She provided. She did not provide the black pepper to him, and instead, when Kamal Sibaga needed it, it was completely not there. So then, his sister became very very sad, and the story goes on. And then, her sister tells Bhagwan Swamiran to tell uh, Jinabai to forgive him, and then Jinabai forgives him on the command of Bhagwan Swamiran. But the story's moral is that look at how much surat bao. Jina Bai had. Look at how much affectionate feeling Jina Bai had towards Kamal Si Bhagat. Even Kamal Si Bhagat was not his family member yet. He treated him as his family member, served him. And then after he got better, he continued to serve him. So this is the kind of Surat Bao that Gunatitan Swami is talking about in his Vato. And saying that, regarding that point, we should treat our fellow devotees, whoever comes to temple here, with the same kind of affectionate feeling. When we do this, when we, when we come to Mandir, if you're a first-timer, or if you've come a couple times to Mandir, and you see other fellow, you can say devotees, you don't know that person yet. You see that everyone gets along very nice here. Even if you don't know them, you still talk to them like you know them for years or you still engage with them. Why is that? Because the environment of the mandir is so different from everything else. Because of Bhagwan and because of Santo, the environment completely turns into something that you're able to adjust to. So regarding that point, Surat Bhav plays the role of food in for the human body. Moving on, lastly, Swami talks about Agna. Agna means the command of God. Just like how in Christianity, there's the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal, thou shall not swear. It goes on and on, on. In the same way, in our Sampradaya, in our religion, there is the commandments in the form of the Shikshapatri. Bhagwan Swamiran himself wrote the Shikshapatri and he established it. And we all devotees, all saints should follow upon what he is saying and what he is imbibing by to reach Akshardham. So regarding that, I put Agna as clothes. Now what do clothes do for us? Can you tell me? What do clothes do for us? Do they make us look good? Exactly. Clothes play the form of protection. Meaning, in the winter, you wear a heavy coat, right? And in the summer, you wear shorts. Why? Because in the summer, it's very warm. So if you were to wear a heavy coat and heavy jeans and the thermal and a hat and gloves and snow boots in the summer, what would happen to you? You might get sick. Like what would happen? You might go to the hospital? You might get a fever, right? Something like that would happen. But in the same exact opposite direction, suppose it was a winter time and your parents told you no, yet you went out in shorts and had a bundi on. I don't know how to do that in English, so I'm just going to go with the bundi. A bundi on. Then what would happen? You. So you would get a fever in both situations, in the summer and in the winter? Nothing. That's right. You're completely right. I completely agree with you. You would get a fever in the summer. You would get a fever in the winter. So it's not good, right? But if you wore the appropriate clothes in the appropriate season, then you would be okay. Right now, how do you feel? Hot, cold, warm? How do you feel? Medium? Okay. You feel hot? The AC is on. You know that. I should turn down the AC. Okay. You have, you, you have the half. Okay. That's all right. We'll make you feel a little cooler, okay? I promise. So, regarding that, 
let's go back to my topic. Um, the clothes exactly, what they do is they protect us from any kind of weather. In the same way, following the commands of Bhagwan, following at what he says, if Bhagwan says, do not do this, do not eat onion, do not eat garlic, then we don't have to think that why is Bhagwan saying this? Onion and garlic is just some, it's not meat, so that I, I can still eat it. But Bhagwan has a very, very long vision. He can see the future. He can see your future. And by eating these things, it's harmful to our body. We might not know it. It's harmful for our mind. So Bhagwan gives us these small agnas or commands. Bhagwan says one should do puja every day. You know that puja is kind of like, you know how they say that breakfast is uh, <clears throat> the most important meal of the day? Have you heard of that? Breakfast is in the morning, right? Between what time? Six to nine, I think? Or six to eight? Six to eight, do you eat breakfast? No, sometimes? You should, you go to school. What do you, what, what do you, what do you eat for breakfast? What? A Nutella sandwich. I don't know what that is, okay. 10.45 lunch, that's early. What about you? I don't know. What? I don't, what? What do you say? Nothing, nothing at all. It's the most important meal of the day. I know, I know, but these doctors, they're saying that this is the most important meal of the day. So they say this, you know why? Because the whole energy of your day is provided in the morning. So when you eat, then you're very strong throughout your whole day in the same exact way. When you do puja, you do puja, who does puja? A little bit here and there. You might be new to it, but when you pray to Bhagwan in the morning, then it's kind of like spiritual food and it's the most important. And all throughout your day, you can remember Bhagwan. That's why Bhagwan says do puja in the morning. So regarding that, I have a story for you, and I want to tell you it. There was a devotee uh, by the name of Naja Jogya. What was his name? That is weird, I know. But you have to say it. What is his name? I can't hear you. Yes, that is his name. And what this devotee was, he was a very, very good devotee of Bhagwan Swamin. He was great, you know. He was the best A-plus devotee. And what had happened was that there was this king by the name of Vasur Kachar. What was his name? Vasur Kachar. What was his name? Vasur Yeah. So he commanded Naja Jogya to swear. Now, Naja Jogya, in the Shiksha Pratir, it says, Bhagwan says, do not swear at all. But this king was so, I guess, messed up, you can say, that he told Naja Jogya, swear, for no reason. There was nothing, I don't know, has anyone, anyone told you to swear without any reason? You? I hope you didn't, did you? No. Well, did you have a reason to swear before too? Have you sworn for a reason? Okay, good, don't swear, okay? So, what had happened was that Naja Jogi, obviously, knowing that he's, a, he's like a good devotee, he's like, I don't wanna swear, you know, you're my king, I appreciate you, I like you, but I don't want to swear. So Vasrukhachar is like, why not? I am your king, you should, you should follow me. You should say what I, you should do what I say. So Naja Jogi explained that my Bhagwan has told me that do not swear, so I do not swear. He, the king said, who is your Bhagwan? He said, Bhagwan Swamiran is my Bhagwan. Show me him. He said that he is not, Naja Jogi said, he's not here right now. Then the king said, I'm not your king, I'm your Bhagwan. You're not my Bhagwan, he said. You're my king, come on. You can't do things that my God can do. So the king became very insulted. You know, he felt very, very upset. So what he did was he threw Naja Jogi into jail and he told him that I'll give you one day Tomorrow morning, if you don't swear, then what I'll do is I will kill you. This is what he said, just for not swearing. So 
Sriji Maharaj was thousands and thousands of kilometers away, miles away. He was very, very far. But when he found out, how did he find out? Because he's God, obviously. Come on, he can find anything out. So he found out that his devotee, Naja Jogya, was in trouble. So immediately, he came to the rescue and he got Naja Jogya out. Don't tell me how Bhagwan got there. He might have flown, I don't know, like Superman. He might have even just transported from one area to another. He might have, uh, I guess, ran really, really fast. I don't know. Don't tell me how he got there, but he got there, okay? So he saved his devotee's life. Why? Because Naja Jogya followed his Bhagwan's command. What was his Bhagwan's command? Go ahead, say it aloud. Exactly. So, saying this and regarding this point, just think. If you had a seed, if I had a seed of corn, and if I were to plant it into the ground, then what would grow after months? Corn. But if someone told you that if you plant this seed of corn, then wheat will grow, would you believe him? In the same exact way, by following the commands of Bhagwan. Even if someone tells you that this is wrong and you're not going to get anything out of it, don't worry about him or her. Just do what Bhagwan and Santo say. And by doing this, everything and everything will work out in your life. So, regarding this, Sadhguru Gunathan Swami talks about four kinds of resources, four kinds of, you can say, food for the in the form of Agna, Upasna, Suratbhav, and Ekantik, uh, ekantik Satpurush uh, affection, if one follows these four formulas, then one would become happy in one's life. So this is my lecture. What we do is we do half, myself, and now the other half, Puja uh, Rushivalab Swami. He's a Swami. He speaks in English as well. He's going to give you his other lecture, okay? So now I'm going to give it to Puja Rushi Swami. वर्णिवेशरमणीयदर्शनम् मंदहासरुचिरानामभुजम् पूजितम् सुरनरो तमेर मुदा धर्मनंदनम् हम विचिन्तय श्रीगणश्याम महाराजनीज Almighty Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swami Narayan, our Pujya Guruji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Today I am going to tell you a story which mostly focus on my today's subject. My subject is continuity in our religious practice. First of all, I want to ask you a question. How many weight you can lift? <clears throat> How many weight you can lift? 5 kgs, 10 pounds, 20 pounds? Just say any amount. Yes? 20 pounds. Okay. Not more than that. No. Okay. F forget the things. But in our holy book, Gunaditanan Swami Nivato, Swami had explained one example. And in that ex example, he had said that. Uh, Safer, 
Do you know who is Sefer? No. <laughs> who uh, who own the cattle like cows, buffaloes? Okay. So one Sefer, he he has, he has one uh, baby buffalo. They have seen ever buffalo? Okay. That baby buffalo. And <clears throat> that Sefer, he always doing one thing with that baby buffalo. He always leave that buffalo from the day when the buffalo is born. Every day he lived and put another area. So after some years, the same sefer can leave a mature buffalo, means a big buffalo. Why? Can you imagine uh, anybody or any person can leave a buffalo? No. Right. But this sefer can leave a buffalo because he has practice. He has practice and he has never forget in his practice to lifting the buffalo and due to his continuity in lifting buffalo every day he can even lift a mature a big buffalo which not everybody can lift this is the moral of this story this focus on my subject continuity in our religious practice in our religious practice, whether we are a kids or a elder or old age people, but if we can do only a small amount of worship of uh, worship of Bhagwan or a small amount of chanting his name, just for example, if you counting. 108 times Bhagwan's Nam. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami. But if you continue, means every day, practice this 108 times chanting the name of Bhagwan, then just count how many times you can chant Bhagwan's name after a week. Probably 100 into 7. 100 multiply 7 means 700 times you can chant Bhagwan's name after a week. But if you can chant his name regularly, means always without fear, right? Same thing you can't after a month, after a six month, after a year. How many times you can chant Bhagwan's name? But if you try to chant Bhagwan's name 700 times in a day, is it possible for you? It is very hard. But if you try to chant his name in fixed number every day, you can get a huge number after some time, means after a week, after a month or after a year. Same thing explained in the Vachnamrut, our main scripture. In our main scripture in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan Swaminar himself says for the devotee. In the fifth Vachnamrut of Gura first chapter, Bhagwan says, Whether you can behold the Bhagwan's divine form in your heart or not, but if you continuously practice to behold Bhagwan's form in your heart while you are engaging yourself in meditation. Whether today you cannot behold the form, you cannot see while your eyes are closed, the divine form of Bhagwan. But if you practice this meditation for 
year, for five years, for ten years. But it is Bhagwan's word. Bhagwan says, one day you can see Bhagwan's divine form within your heart. But you need only to do practice without failure every day. Now my second point is you just you I think you know the example of uh, Albert Einstein. You know about him and his success story of the investigation investigating the bulb, electricity bulb, right? After how many experiment he can found the bulb? Yeah, many times he failed, but he never, without failure, he always engaged his work without becoming discouraged. He never discouraged and he always anchoring his own self and always practicing more and more enthusiasm. And finally, he can give us the bulb. So if you we also want to do something in your life, in your religious life, we have to do practice regularly and without becoming discouraged. Because discourage is the main obstacle in our life. Whether we are thinking about our social or educational life or whether we are thinking about our religious life. But if we want to success in our life, we, it is our duty, it is our responsibility not to become discouraged. And without becoming discouraged, we have to follow our aim. We have to do more and more time for our life's perspective purpose. What is our life's purpose? Our main purpose of living this human life is to attain God realization. Because eating is not our main goal. Because animals, cows, birds and other animals, they also getting food. They also eating. So there is indifference between human and animals. They can also sleep like us. Right? They are all enjoying the same pleasure what we are enjoying. But the main difference of the human life and other lives means animals and birds and other species of life. We can worship Bhagwan. We can do bhajan of Bhagwan. And by this way of becoming a religious person, we can become something different from an animal. And this is our main goal, to be religious, to be a genuine person, to be a very civilized person is only main goal of our human life. Otherwise, what is the difference between our, our life and the animal's life? And for that purpose, we have to follow each and every command of scriptures, each and every words of Bhagwan and Santo, because Santo always speaks us about the scriptures. What the scripture says, they only explain. And because without a tutor, you have many textbooks, you have many reference books, and you have many kinds of study material. But without tutor, can you read? No doubt, you can read, but can you understand the whole your book? Without tutor, it is mostly impossible for student to understand all the syllabus. But if you have tutor, you have a teacher, and he teach you a proper method to understand, to grasp the, what the text says. 
then you can understand. Same thing happen in our religious, our religious society. We have many, many scriptures, but if we can understand language, we can read the scriptures, but not fully understand the scriptures because the, meaning, the true meaning of the scriptures we cannot understand. Only God realized saints who has attained God realization, they can only understand the fully the meaning of the scriptures. And that's why if we, if we approach such tutor in the form of saint, then and then they can explain us what the scripture says. And that is why we need first a tutor who can explain us, who can teach us the real glory of Bhagwan, the method of worshipping to Bhagwan. These all religious things can only and only be attained by the grace of Bhagwan and Santo. That's why our first need is to attain a saint who can make us understand about the religious or religious duty. And saint can make us a proper human. That is why if we have saint, if we can have a company of such a person who can lead our life, then the second duty or our second duty is to understand, is to follow his talks. Means walk the talk. Not merely walking, but walking only and only according to this, the discourses of the saints. Means talk of the saints. This is our second duty. And the third duty, the God realization or the fulfilling of our goal of life that will automatically attain us because we have, if we have follow first two points. Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself says in the 23rd Vachnavrata Gada first chapter, he had given an example. If we want, if you want to uh, create a pool of water and you just imagine, one day, you pour a glass of water in the pool. The pool is empty. And you just pour a glass of water in the pool. And after a week, you pour a second glass of water. Then, is it possible for you to fill the whole pool with water even after a year or after two years? No. Because the water, the first glass of water you have poured in the pool that will dry up after a week when you are ready to pour a second glass of water. Same thing happens in our religious practice. When we chant or when we worship Bhagwan, only in weekend, in the weekdays, we totally we totally forget about the God, about our worshipping, about His name, His glory. And that's why we have to do, we have to do whether we are chanting or whether we are worshipping God, we have to do every day. And that's why even you can chant our five times Bhagwan's name, but you can, uh, you should chant Bhagwan's name every day. Okay? Uh, are you uh, really chanting Bhagwan's name every day? No. Sometimes. But what happens in sometimes? That will not, un, uh, if you want a real result, then you should chant Bhagwan's name every day. How many times you can chant in a day? But how can you chant? How, uh, how many times 
you can chant Bhagwan's name fifty times. So you should. What is your duty? Every day, without failure, in the morning or even in a at a time of bed, means when you are going to sleep at night. Before sleeping, you should chant Bhagwan's name fifty times. Or if you have no, if you have time in morning, you can chant fifty times Bhagwan's name. But if you every day chant Bhagwan's name, after a month and after two months, you can you can feel some uh, some divinity in within yourself, some a uh, different power, some different strength. Within yourself, this is the power of continuity in religious practice. Now today the time is over, and my subject is also over. I think you can understand, and I think you from today start to chant Bhagwan's name without failure and every day. Right? Promise. Bhagwan is ready for us, and <clears throat> promise Bhagwan, not me. Okay, you are. I think today first time coming to this mandir, so please give something to Bhagwan today as a gift, and that gift is what? Yeah, good. So without failure, but not only giving promise, but you should follow your words. Okay. Hari Krishna Maharaj Ni Jai Ganesh Maharaj Ni Jai.